I started my blog in 2001. First it was on Blogspot, then LiveJournal, then WordPress, then Tumblr. As long as I've been putting words on the internet, I've also been putting words into zines. I learned social media and publishing at the same time. I got on Twitter in 2006. Back then we only had 140 characters per tweet. The creative limitation, that restraint, is what I really loved about it. I loved that you had to think about every single word, every single piece of punctuation, whether it was worth it to be grammatically correct or to fit your words into a tweet. Even with the 280 characters we have now, you still have to think about each tweet carefully, which of course is why we invented tweet threads. The users invented that, it wasn't Twitter. We wanted more space to write, so we linked our tweets together. This is also a zine. Each tweet is like a page in your zine. You have to consider the flow and the rhythm. You have to think about the beginning and the end. Laying out a zine is the same. Which pages come in which order? Tumblr was 2007. Tumblr was very different from LiveJournal. On LiveJournal, I wrote words. On Tumblr, I reblogged pictures. On Tumblr, it wasn't about one post. It was about all of the posts together. Back in the day, before I uh, accidentally deleted my 10 year old blog, oops, I would have linked you to my Tumblr and said, this is me. The spirit of Tumblr is in my zines. It's in the variety, the words and the pictures all together. And the spirit of zines is in Tumblr too, in its variety of posts, text, image, music, video, memes, it all lives together in the same place. I joined Instagram in 2010 when my friend linked me and said, check this out. I really liked the filters, but I didn't want another social network. But then there were stories, and stories really clicked for me when I realized it was like laying out a page of a zine. It's about the image, and then the words laid on top, and then an animated gif if you want to give yourself a little extra attention. And like Twitter threads, I consider the flow and the rhythm throughout the day. How do I want people to page through my stories? How do I get them hooked and keep them going through to the end? Spotify is a social network in that you like spying on your friend's taste. What is your friend listening to on repeat right now? But the real power of Spotify is the playlists. The user-generated playlists. And what is a zine but a list of eight pages? Every zine I make, nearly everything that I make, starts with a list. It helps me organize my thoughts and direct my writing. And with a playlist, we're thinking about rhythm again. The order of things is an important consideration. I've been on YouTube since the very beginning, but I didn't start actually making YouTube videos until this year, until 2022. After all the writing, and the filming, the editing is what makes a YouTube video. And editing is what makes a zine also. There's not a lot of space in a zine. It doesn't matter what size you're making. The pages are not infinite when we're talking about print. You have to edit. My videos, I try to keep them under five minutes. I don't want to waste your time. And my zines are short too. I like tiny ones. And then there's the white space. Thinking about silence. You don't have to fill every moment. I make these comparisons not because it's a clever conceit, but because I want you to understand if you are good at social media, you are already good at zines. You have all the skills that you need. Publishing isn't harder when it's printed on paper. It's the same writing and editing that you do when you're writing a blog or a tweet, posting to Instagram stories, or editing a YouTube video. If this were the last page of my zine, then I would tell you, this has been written and created by Jess Driscoll. It was made on August 20th. Because it's a YouTube video, I'm going to tell you, it was filmed on an iPhone 8 Plus. It was edited in iMovie on a 27-inch iMac. And because it's YouTube, I'm going to tell you, like and subscribe. Thanks for coming along, and I'll see you in the next video. Ooh, it's time for a spooky story about being very old on the internet.